So you went all out. You bought yourself something like a Rode Pod mic and a shiny new Scarlett interface. You plug it into your computer, set it all up, hit record, and what, what the hell is that? That, my friends, is a small, itty bitty, teeny weeny waveform. So what can you do about it? What should you do about it? Does size really matter? Yes, it does. Oh. Okay, so the usual reason for this happening is, well, you bought a dynamic microphone. Don't worry, it really isn't a bad choice. And honestly, depending on what you're doing, it might not even need much of a fix. So first, let's start out with what the problem is. You see, dynamic microphones don't have any power to them. So basically, they require more gain for them to reach line level. So in layman's terms, you gotta keep turning that dial. Be careful though, the more gain you add to your signal, the more noise is imparted to it by the preamps. So then how do you do it? Well, if you're recording something that will be edited and worked on later, as long as it's not too small, you can just gain it up in post, which is a very normal thing to do. In fact, most people like to record with a lower signal in general. That way they have a lot of headroom to work with the audio and post. Now, this also gives you room to record and avoid any loud outbursts from clipping. Basically, what all this means is if you're gonna be working the audio after you record it, well, it doesn't really matter how small the signal looks. Okay then, so you might ask, how big is my waveform when I'm recording? Well, I'm rather comfortable recording my audio between neg 15 and neg 12 with nothing really going over neg nine, unless I pop a P. So if your audio is around the same, well, you're gonna be perfectly fine. But Aiden, I'm a live streamer and I need to be louder. I get it. You can do some fancy stuff in OBS, but you don't wanna do that, right? Nah, you want the full sound straight up. If it ain't about to clip, you don't want it. You're a real man or real woman because you know what quality. Who wrote this? Oh, it was me. Yeah. So perhaps an inline preamp might be what you want. Now, there are a ton of different brands out there that offer this, but the two most popular are the Triton Fathead and the Cloudlifter. Now, what these are, are preamps that boost the signal before they get to your interface, almost reacting like a condenser would, kind of powering your signal. I know there's gonna be a bunch of gearheads that are gonna wanna bust my ball for saying that, but simmer down, kids. Just trying to explain the concept, okay? But they can take a redlined SM7B into something that hardly requires half the game. It's very useful. And before you break out into a riot about which brand is better, many creators on here have put them head to head, and honestly, they really don't sound that much different. Booth Junkie did one, and if you can trust anyone, it's Mike Delgadio. I mean, dude actually has audio in his name. Just go out and buy a fathead. They're pretty cheap. See, done. But I don't want to do that. Okay, then, well, there's a reason why a lot of starter packs have condensers in them instead of dynamic microphones. So just get a condenser, I guess. I, you need a lot less gain for a condenser. And if you can control your surroundings and how much your voice bounces off the walls, it's a good idea for most. And no, you don't need to spend a bunch of money on treatment. In fact, I did do a video about this a few months back or maybe a year back, it's been a while check it out up, up here. Now, condensers do tend to have a richer sound as well as a much higher dynamic range. Good ones do tend to cost you a bit more, but you can get a great starter mic like the AKG P120 for under a hundred bucks. I'll link a few good ones down below if you wanna check it out. But Aiden, I want the loud and fat waveform that looks like a poop sausage. Wow, that is an incredibly graphic and uncalled for description. Didn't need that, thanks. So that is possible. What you're looking for is inline effects, most notably an EQ, possibly a gate, and most likely compression. Now, honestly, if that's something you want, just buy a Revelator or a Rodecaster Pro 2 and be done with it. But if that is below you and you want it all, even while eating your cake, well, you're gonna have to spend a lot of money on gear that goes between your pod mic and your Scarlett 2i2. Then you're gonna have to take quite a bit of time learning how to set it up and use it, including multiple failed recordings, just to learn things that people actually go to school for. At this point, you may also wanna consider your extreme case of gas or gear acquisition syndrome. Now, I wouldn't recommend this to anyone. Honestly, if you couldn't be arsed to learn how to work your audio and you just really do want that single solution, buy a Rodecaster Pro 2 and a U87AI. Again, link is in the video description. And at this point, if you're still clamoring at the walls, watch this video. I have a feeling some of it might apply to you.